Today we're going to talk about uh, deep flow product tumors and parapharyngeal space tumors, uh, which are attached to the product line. I'm Dr. Bob Aklarion from Center for Advanced Product and Facial Nerve Surgery. The most important aspect of all this is the facial nerve. Facial nerve travels from the brain through a bony canal that comes out of the skull right here, enters the product gland, goes through the product gland, and goes through the muscles of the face and leads to movement of the facial musculature, which gives you your expressions, uh, blinking, smile, and so on. Very important in normal functionality. The location of this nerve is so important that there are books written about it. In fact, one of the books was written by my partner, Dr. Azizadeh, about this very subject and the importance of the facial nerve. Now, facial nerve can have varying anatomies. It can have many branches that come directly. It can have connected branches like this. So coming many branches connecting together and then going out to the periphery, to the muscles of the face. And the relationship of a tumor to the nerve determines if it's superficial or deep. So the tumor here can be superficial to the tumor or it can be deep. And here you can see the nerve branches. Let me clear that. The nerve branches going over this tumor. So the tumor is deep to it. Now let me give you more details. When you go look at the cross section of the face, here's the earlobes, nose as you can see, this is the jawbone here. This is the product gland right, that comes out like this almost. This doesn't show the front extension of the product, right? And deep to the product is the muscles of the jaw that go on the inside of the jawbone, right? And then this, this set of blood vessels and then nerves, a whole bunch of nerves are around it, okay? So this is a very important location. And when we do a close-up of that, again, you can see the jawbone here. Let me do it in black. The product gland, which as you'll see in another picture, goes actually much further forward, right? And comes in and dips in here. And then you have the collection of blood vessels and nerves that are behind it, okay? To look at it just a little bit differently, this is the bone, the jawbone. These are the muscles. Of the jaw, on the outside and inside of the jaw. This is the parotid gland. And you can see the facial nerve, so in yellow, the facial nerve just coming through the product gland, right? So if a tumor is superficial to that nerve, it, we call it a superficial tumor. If the tumor is deep to the nerve, it is a deep lobe tumor. And if the tumor is coming from the outer tip of the gland here and going into the space deep to the uh, jawbone and close to the throat, that's called parapharyngeal space tumor. Parapharyngeal, para means next, pharynx means the throat. Parapharynx means next to the throat tumor. So the throat would essentially be somewhere around here. All right, all right, moving on. So the parapharyngeal space tumor, again, tumors next to the throat. If you were to imagine it, there. If you go deep to the jaw, if you have a cut out of the jaw and the product, you can see that this parapharyngeal space tumor, some people say it looks like a pyramid, upside down pyramid, and the back side of it are blood vessels and nerves, blood vessels and the nerve branches, right? And superficial to it is just the deep part of the product gland that extends into that space, okay? So you have to think a little three-dimensionally to get to understand these things. And this is another way of looking at it, where you can see the space deep to the jawbone, next to the spine, underneath the skull. Okay? The, the parapharyngeal space is divided into two compartments, right? By these red, by these bones that are marked as red, these are called styloid bones. The styloid bones is located in an area where the blood vessels are. This is the styloid bone right there. 
the blood vessels are, and nerves are deep to that or behind that. The parotid gland usually comes in front of it. So let's look at another view of it. Again, this is another view where this is the jawbone. These are the muscles. This is the parotid gland. Okay, that sneaks in behind the jawbone and goes there. And so if you have a tumor developed from here, the tumor can be in front of the blood vessels, which we call pre-styloid, or it can be behind, which is post-styloid. That's a very important distinction. So tumors that are next to your throat on the inside, from, uh, in the parapharyngeal space, underneath the skull, they are either in front of the styloid bone, which means they are of parotid origin, right? They're parotid tumors, or they are behind the styloid, which could be that there are tumors from the nerves, from the blood vessels, and they're very different types of tumors and they should be addressed differently, right? And the spaces have different, different structures. The post-styloid, again, has the blood vessels and arteries. Pre-styloid has product gland, a little bit of fat, minor branches, minor blood vessels, right? So this is a much safer space, the pre-styloid. All right, so on MRI, let's look at uh, product tumors. Again, this is the product gland. This is the left side of the person. This is the right side, right? And on this side, this is the entire product gland. And this is the tumor you can see. Well, this side, so that's a superficial uh, parotid tumor. This side, this whole thing is the parotid and the clearly delineated white tumor looks like it's deep. So you have some normal parotid tissue superficial to it and not much deep to it. And this side, you don't have much superficial parotid, but much, a lot of parotid deep to it, right? So this is a deep lobe tumor and this is a superficial. All right. Now, you have the superficial tumor clearly seen here more than likely the nerve is going underneath and then coming to the face this is a deep lobe tumor which means more than likely the nerve is going over it or to the side of it and coming there to the face and this is a parapharyngeal space tumor so this is the parotid gland and this tumor seems to be coming from the deep tip of the parotid gland and going next to the pharynx and the pharynx the throat is here so parapharynx means next to pharynx, right? The location of these tumors also matters because some locations allow us to do a needle biopsy, find out what type of tumor it is, and some locations don't allow that. So a superficial tumor can be easily biopsied by putting a needle in that way. Uh -huh. A deep lobe tumor also you can put a needle in and figure out what type, but this one is not necessarily accessible because this this is the jawbone here, right? And these are the blood vessels. So the access point is just this narrow gap for the needle to get into that. And oftentimes we don't have access. So the parapharyngeal space tumors don't lend themselves oftentimes to a needle biopsy. So you can figure out what that is. And based on location, potential tumor growth rate, you have to decide if treatment is appropriate. You can have parapharyngeal tumors that are just starting from the tip of the product and going in, or you can have deep lobe tumors that grow inwards all the way in, right? So this is a deep lobe tumor that has grown all the way into the parapharyngeal space. And again, this is the throat, the pharynx, and this is the throat, okay? Now, how do you treat these? So prodotectomy has overgone an evolution over time. Um, the original type of surgery had a big incision that would start in front of the ear and go all the way down in the neck, right? Over time, some people have started using a facelift incision, a facelift that goes here in front of the ear and then goes back in the hairline so you can hide it better, not in my hairline, but other people's hairlines. And so that can hide well. And then the newest version is what I call a microparotidectomy and surgery that I've been doing for more than a decade and a half, which starts in front of the earlobe and then goes in the groove 
behind the hair. So it's a much more minimally invasive approach, easier recovery, much less trauma to the tissue. Um, people do just significantly better coming out of this surgery. For tumors that are in the parapharyngeal space alone, right, and not in the deep lobe of the product or the superficial lobe, you can actually make an incision, a small incision in the neck and go up and remove the tumor, right? Or you could do it through the mouth. So if the tumor is closer to the palate, and you can see that on the MRI, you can actually access it through the mouth. So I'm gonna show you two examples. Now, uh, these are gonna show some surgical videos. So, so again, these two tumors can be approached through microprotic. A superficial tumor and a deep lobe tumor all can be accessed through a small incision here, right? This is not surgical pictures. This is just MRIs showing that. On this one, this is a deep lobe tumor. This actually, this tumor is this patient's tumor, which is also done through a microprotectomy approach. And you can see the, you know, most of the work is done. This is three hours into the surgery by the time we get to here. And you can see this tumor coming out, right? Which has the shape and look of this particular thing, right? Now, for this tumor, because it's close to the palate, this is the area of the palate, right? This tumor is so close to it that as you can see in the video, we are able to take the tumor out through the mouth. Again, that's after our work of separating the tumor, closing that blood vessel that you see right on the tumor itself and taking it out through the mouth. So there's many different approaches. Um, and the, uh, uh, if the tumor was a little bit farther back, this particular tumor is a little bit farther back where we couldn't access it through the mouth, we wouldn't access it through a in small incision right here, right? This avoids injury to the nerves of the mouth. The transoral approach, when the tumor is accessible that way, also avoids the potential risk to the facial nerves, right? Because the facial nerves are more superficial. So both the transoral and the neck approaches are very relatively safe approaches as it relates to the facial nerve, all right? So the, basically, if you have any kind of parotid tumor, superficial, deep, or parapharyngeal space, you need someone with a lot of experience to be able to do the right surgery for you, minimize the risk, maximize your recovery, and uh, how quickly you can, you can get back, get going, and so on. With the, all these approaches that I've shown you, uh, our outpatient patients go home the same day unless they have other medical issues, heart, lung disease, kidney disease, or so on. Otherwise, they go home the same day. They eat, talk, walk, everything. By the next morning, I actually force people to go for walks and get the blood circulating and get the recovery started. And by three weeks after surgery, they can resume full exercise. So, so these can be addressed relatively easily and with, with less complexity, once, once you have a surgeon that has expertise in doing this. Now, if you find this video helpful, please like the video, please subscribe to us. That way we know which videos are helpful to you and we can make more similar types of videos for you. You welcome.